It's 2020 and all the filmmakers, instead of asking how to tell the best story, they're asking us, which gimbal should I get? That's why we decided to make this video because every single day, all sorts of people slide into our DMs asking, which gimbal should I get? What is the cheapest gimbal? Which is the best performer? Oh my God, I heard this gimbal has a lot of issues. Maybe I should get this one instead of this gimbal. And this is gonna be the most valuable video you will watch in 2020, I promise you that. And yes, it did sound like a course right now, but I promise you it's not. Welcome to the ultimate gimbal buying guide of 2020. Okay, let's start talking about the future generation, which is mobile filmmakers. A couple of years ago, I was really excited about um, phone gimbals, right? In fact, that was one of the first gimbals I ever tested out. They were necessary back then because the stabilization in phones wasn't really that great. Well, fast forward to nowadays and uh, with the new iPhones, the new Samsungs, the stabilization in the phones are so good that I personally believe that you don't need a phone gimbal. In a conclusion, if you're a person who has an old phone, let's say like a iPhone 6S, or a Galaxy S6 or something like that, which don't really have a great stabilization in them, I think you should just grab pretty much the cheapest phone gimbal you can find. I would say Smooth 4 is a very good option because that gimbal, it did survive for two years. It's still alive. I love it. I don't have it, but uh, I have used it a lot and it was perfect for the things I was shooting, cinematic B-roll and stuff. And right now you can get a used one for like 40 or $50. This is one of the newest gimbals, which is uh, the Zion Smooth X. It's pretty great. It's not the best gimbal out there, but I mean, it's like you can get it for $60 and uh, yeah, you can get some good content, I guess. But if you have one of the latest phones, let's say like a Samsung S20 or iPhone 11, I don't think you need phone stabilizers there in my honest opinion, a thing in the past. Now we're gonna be talking about the most underrated gimbal of 2020. Seriously, this gimbal is amazing. This is the Zion M2, and not a lot of people know about this because they think this small of a gimbal can only, only handle phones or GoPros or point and shoot cameras. No, this actually can handle mirrorless cameras with light prime lenses as well. Like I have a Sony Alpha 6500 with a Samyang 12 millimeter lens here. This setup is not the lightest of setups. I mean, it's pretty light, but it's not that light. And this gimbal can handle it mwah, perfectly. Okay, listen up. There are some big advantages and big disadvantages with this gimbal. So let's start. I'm feeling very negative today. So let's start with the disadvantages. Balancing a camera on this gimbal is a bitch. <laughs> I mean, I'm a fast learner when it comes to balancing cameras on gimbals, but even on this gimbal, it takes me around one to three minutes, three freaking minutes to completely balance a camera. This time, for some reason, I got lucky and it was only a minute, but usually it takes two or three minutes, which is a lot because since this gimbal is so tiny, literally every single micro adjustment just counts. You know, it like, you can move it one millimeter and that's it. It's not gonna be balanced anymore. It's gonna be completely thrown off balance. But that's pretty much the only disadvantage I have with this gimbal. Let's talk about the good things about this gimbal. This is the most compact gimbal I have ever seen in my entire life. I have shot projects with this, don't worry about it. I'm gonna be putting some beer on the screen, but um, my buddy and I went on a Europe trip a year ago, right? We visited, um, I think around five countries, Sweden, Netherlands, Denmark, Austria, Germany, Poland. All we had with us was our cameras and this gimbal, and it performed so good. I mean, it's not the most stable thing in the world. Duh, it's not a big gimbal, you know? It doesn't have really a lot of weight. You will see a lot of up and down movement. But man, for the results we were getting, this is amazing. The battery life is amazing. It doesn't take much space at all. You can literally put this thing in your pocket and it's so good. So basically, in the conclusion, if you're a guy who travels a lot and you don't really want to carry these big rigs, you just want to have a gimbal which you can put in your smallest uh, backpack pocket, this is the gimbal for you. If you shoot with Sony Alpha cameras and light prime lenses like the Samyang 12, Sony 35, Sigma 16, or even Sony 85 millimeter, this will be able to handle it and it's amazing. We love it and actually, I'm soon probably gonna be also taking this uh, little gimbal on projects because I want to spice things up and I don't want to really work with those big gimbals anymore so I just want to feel that nostalgia but yeah this gimbal is amazing and I would recommend you to check this out because right now I literally a couple of days ago saw one guy on a Facebook group selling this for $130 $130 are you kidding me a new one costs already like 250 which is cheap but $130 bro grab this shit right now
This is a gimbal you've probably seen me with the most, the Weeble S. Okay, first things first, let's get out of the way the most important information. Don't look at Weeble Lab. Weeble Lab is a thing in the past, only look at Weeble S because of the stronger motors and a nicer solid feel to it, right? Listen, this gimbal has been, whoo, it's been everywhere, man. It's been everywhere, I love it. It's so compact, it's like, it's basically only a little bit bigger, honestly, than the M2, but it's like 10 times more powerful. It's so good, it's my favorite gimbal ever. I absolutely love it. When I go traveling, this is my number one go-to gimbal just because of the size and the strength it has, and I really appreciate it. So, basically, this gimbal can handle setups such as Sony A7S III with uh, G Master Sony lenses, like really huge setups, up to three kilograms, easily. I've even balanced a C100 Mark II on this gimbal, so it's really powerful. Imagine like this small gimbal and like a huge camera, right? I don't know, man, I love this gimbal. Even though sometimes uh, when I did update the firmware, it was glitching a little bit, the roll motor was going like this, but then I went to an older firmware and everything has been working absolutely fantastic. There's no motor vibrations. You can actually, you know, the biggest strength of this gimbal is the fact that you can put the tripod leg here and just get these extremely low angle shots without breaking your back. Not like with all the pistol gimbals where you literally have to do this, you know, it's not nice for your back. But yeah, absolutely fantastic gimbal. I've seen people selling this for $250, $300. For this price, this gimbal is an absolute steal. It just works. It, do, it has done so many gigs for me. I love it. Never had any issues with it, major issues. And uh, yeah, you guys definitely need to check this one out. It's worth every penny. As many of you know, we travel a lot. Well, at least you used to travel a lot when all this shit came, came down, <laughs> very sad. And yeah, one of the most important things for us wasn't, uh, you know, performance. It was actually portability and mobility. And this is where this gimbal delivers. It's seriously, it's like such a sweet balance between portability and uh, performance. It's just so good, so good. Uh, I mean, when it comes to things I don't like about it, it could be a little bit smoother compared to, I don't know, Crane 3. But I mean, I, I mean, come on, you can't complain, you can't complain. Sometimes balancing can be a little bit weird. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's because I haven't oiled this bad boy, if you know what I mean. But uh, other than that, absolutely love it. Please go check it out. We have a review for this gimbal, which is actually a really solid review. You should check it out. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's bring in the big boys, eh? Oh, one more thing, sorry, I forgot. Who is this gimbal for? Well, if you're a travel videographer or a photographer, or maybe you shoot events or weddings or something like that where you have to, you know, use a gimbal for the whole day and you don't want to break your back, this gimbal is perfect for you. This gimbal is basically good for both traveling and commercial work. So yeah, uh, on to the next gimbal. There's only one word to describe it. Thick. Uh, if you're wondering why I don't have my camera on it right now, it's because this thing is actually heavy and I just don't want to be holding it like this all the time. So I'm just going to be putting away somewhere here and just holding it like, like this, okay? So let's talk about this gimbal a little bit. I'm just going to be straight up. If you're a guy who uses cinema cameras, like let's say C100, C200, Sony FX9 and stuff like that, or Reds, this is going to be the perfect gimbal for you. If you're shooting with mirrorless cameras or DSLRs, this is not the gimbal for you. It's gonna be way too heavy, it's gonna be very inconvenient. If you shoot movies, if you put gimbals on like hardcore car rigs or plane rigs or whatever kind of rigs you have, this is the gimbal for you, nothing more to say. The motors are super strong, it's solid as hell. This thing is meant to be abused. This is the Crane 3 Lab, and in my opinion, it is one of the most overlooked and underrated gimbals Zion has ever made. I don't know, somehow I just don't see enough people talking about this. And it is such a great gimbal that I honestly think it needs a word out there, it needs to be known. And uh, this is the first gimbal which uh, moved from the traditional pistol style grip to this grip. And honestly, after using this for a few months, I love this uh, much more than I do with the pistol grips. One of the main advantages of this one is that you can do the orbit movement and the pan shots 
just so much more precisely. And uh, I don't know how to explain this, but when you have it on a pistol, pistol grip right here, you're just using two hands at the same spot. This is almost like a dual handle, but it's made in a portable way. And I really love it. The motors on this thing is probably one of the best parts. They are absolutely solid. This gimbal also gets the award for the easiest balancing ever. I don't know, I can balance this thing in literally like 20 seconds. It is that simple. Also, this gimbal has a screen right here, which shows you the mode. It also has a super handy reset button and uh, there's a POV and the follow mode as well. And this is so much nicer than having the trigger. Uh, it does have a trigger, but I never see the need of even using it. It is so convenient. There are no double taps for like follow mode. The button is right here. And if you need to reset it, it's right there. This gimbal also is the perfect option for doing the underslung movements. It is so handy. When you just do this, it doesn't get heavier like it does with the pistol grips. It's, you can use one hand. I, can, I sometimes even use a couple of fingers to just do these low shots. It is so enjoyable. And honestly, this gimbal is probably the perfect balance between the Weeble S and something a little bit more heavier. So, uh, I have traveled with this gimbal and honestly, it's been a little bit of an issue. If you are a backpacker, it's definitely a little bit too big. Sometimes there is some issues with like putting it in, the, in a bag. But if you do travel with like suitcase and uh, you're shooting like on spot, not really moving uh, around that much, changing locations, it is absolutely the perfect choice. And yes, this still is my gimbal of choice when shooting commercial work or when doing uh, sometimes traveling, but I do prefer Weeble S in that, those type of situations. But anyway, definitely don't miss this gimbal out and check, check it out. It is so overlooked that I just cannot believe it. And yeah, it's just a solid piece of, of a gimbal, yeah. Uh, one of the drawbacks that the Crane 3 Lab has, I forgot to mention, is that the battery doesn't last as long as it does with the rest of the design gimbals. It's just sometimes like randomly almost like dies off, but uh, just keep it charged. Like before a shoot, you definitely need to charge it. And uh, yeah, other than that, I love this gimbal. So this, without a doubt, is the most solid and stable gimbal uh, Zion has ever made. There is no questioning that. So this is the Crane 2S. So yeah, I just roasted these pistol grip gimbals. But honestly, if you do like this design, if you prefer this, you definitely don't worry too much about which one you should pick. Because literally, they are all pretty much the same thing. They do the same thing. The only thing that differs is the features and maybe like the weight distribution and something like that. But overall, you really need to just look at the price, which has the best price and if it does support the right payload. The motors on this thing are absolutely solid. I don't know. You don't even need to worry that much about your ninja walk. This thing is just absolutely stable and solid and you're gonna love it, trust me. Uh, back to roasting these pistol grip gimbals. One of the reasons I don't like this design that much is because the joystick is right here and I, I'm used to holding this uh, gimbal like up here so I have like a good distance between my hands and sometimes I'm still pressing on the joystick and sometimes like when you're in follow mode it does tilt a little bit but obviously that could be just me. Uh, a downside of this gimbal is definitely it's a little bit weird to adjust it uh, not on these axes this is fine but when you need to like uh, adjust it up and down this knob is probably one of the most unergonomic things out there and the Crane 3 lab definitely balances a little bit better but you just can't beat the motors on this thing they are just absolutely a plus solid and if you're shooting commercial work Forget traveling with this gimbal because it is definitely too heavy. So who is this gimbal for? Uh, definitely not for traveling. We're definitely never gonna be using this uh, when we travel because it's just too damn heavy and too damn big. But we're definitely gonna use this for all the commercial work. Uh, this and the Crane 3 Lab probably, we're gonna switch between the two because uh, it is just that solid and we love it. And uh, if you do corporate work, there's no questioning, just get this and it's gonna be good. If you are still not sure which gimbal to buy, I put all the reviews we've made for different gimbals in the description below. You guys know that we don't really like to talk about tech, we much rather show examples, for example work we've shot over the last years with specific gimbals and gear. Yeah, you can just go in the description, check out the full reviews we've made for different gimbals and yeah, hopefully that's gonna help you make up your mind on which gimbal to get. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and you know the drill. Peace out.